Hi, this is Shweta from Growth Idea. And today I want to talk about delegation and talk about certain mindset principles and also certain tactics, which will actually practically help you understand how to delegate effectively. Now, listen, as you are growing your business, you understand that there are dif different complexities. Only 2% of the businesses ever get to cross 5 million turnover mark in their lifespan. One of the top reasons for that is lack of delegation by the remaining businesses. Today, what I really want to talk about is the importance of delegation, because if you are not good at it, not comfortable with this notion, then you will end up being the complexity ceiling in your own business. So let's dive straight into it. And I want you to pay close attention for the next few minutes because it can really make a difference to your business growth and how you are conducting yourself in this entity. All right, so I'll, I'll bring up um, a quick set of slides on the screen. I'm assuming you can see it. This is literally art of delegation, but there is a method behind it, which is what we will talk about. Now, look, it could be that you are not delegating enough because you feel that you might as well do it. It's just going to take you too long to explain it to someone else. Or you might not have that confidence in the other person, um, you know, that will you be able to transfer the project successfully? It could be that you believe that you're the super person. You're the person who can only do this job right. And trust me, there are many people who feel like that. Also, Actually, you might understand the importance of delegation and you want to, but you're not so sure if the team can handle that responsibility well. Or maybe that you actually enjoy completing certain projects, so actually you prefer not to delegate because you're having fun in that. And sometimes I've also seen that business owners feel guilty if they are delegating more work to their employees, to their team members, um, because they feel that they're already busy. The employees are already busy, right? So it could be multitude of reasons. And you have to really ask yourself, say, what are those one or two reasons which generally stop you from delegating effectively? Okay, so just, just reflect on that for just a second or two seconds. Now, look, I can get into tactics and which we will get into to understand how to delegate effectively. But I personally believe that it's not so much the tactics, it's actually the mindset which really needs to be brought into focus. Many business owners out there are not thinking about this strategically enough. And I want to talk about five key principles that you need to be mindful of. So let's just have a look at what these five factors are. The first one for me is really sense of value. OK, this is a really pivotal one. And what I mean by that is if you think about some project, right, or some contract that you have now to make good gross margin on that contract or that project, you have to very carefully allocate resources, your labor, your material, how much time is going into it to ensure that you deliver that project profitably. It's exactly the same in the business. If there is misallocation of resource, then the business profitability and growth gets impacted. And what I mean by that is your role as the head of the business is to ensure that you're allocating your team members to the right tasks, you're allocating yourself to the right tasks, where your time is being deployed, where your headspace is being deployed, because the fact is that you are the biggest asset in your business, you are the biggest resource. So therefore, if you look at yourself very objectively and say, okay, where am I allocating my time? Is this the place where I'm optimizing the value or the impact for the business? And that sense of value, your value per hour, where is the highest economic value? Where is the biggest impact? Because every time you do something which is below your value per hour or potential value per hour, you are actually stealing from the business in terms of the potential of its growth, right? So really understanding where is the biggest value of your tasks? Where should you be deploying yourself, okay? And I'm really focusing on yourself as the person. That's really, really important because if that sense of value is not there, this is where people fritter away their time. They are getting busy with um, average value or low value activities and the day goes by, but the business is not really moving forward. So that's really important. And that's the mindset. You protect your time. You make sure that you're putting it in the right areas. The second one is what I've also seen is that, you know, with business leaders, when there is some task, they generally think saying, okay, how, how should I be going about this? Okay, let's see, you know, um, what needs to be done here. And this is where the switch is required. So if, for example, in my case, or the clients that we work with, it's not how we are actually training them, coaching them to focus on who should 
you be delegating this task to? Who could help you achieve this task um, or complete this task effectively, right? That should be the first question rather than straight away jumping into how. So it's who, not how. Really important mindset. The third one really here is patience. Remember, we talked about why people don't delegate because they feel, oh, I'm not going to spend time. I might as well do it. And just the way you think, all these little tasks keep getting added up. And then there's a ho whole long list of things that you're focusing, which, are, which should not be focused by you. So I think in delegation, and especially if you are playing a long-term game where you're trying to grow the business in a systematic, sustainable way, you need to have patience. You need to understand that you're, team will actually make mistakes. They will fail, which is the fourth point that you need to have tolerance for failure. If you cannot absorb failure and feel like, oh my God, I need to get everything done correctly the first time, then of course you're the best person, but then you can only do so much. So you need to be okay with having a little bit more patience in training, inducting your team, and then okay to absorb the mistakes. We don't want to be making the same mistake twice, but it's okay to make mistakes and then learn from those mistakes, right? That's a really important mindset again. And the fifth one, a really fascinating one is that when, um, you know, business owners, and you might have tolerance for failure, but talking about it to the person you've delegated the task is a big kind of um, burden, emotional burden for quite a few of people confronting the other person and giving them that feedback saying, no, actually you didn't do the task properly. This is how it needs to be done is, is quite a big ask for quite a few of people because they don't want to upset um, the equilibrium. And this is where it's really important for you to understand the concept of radical candor. And radical candor doesn't mean you're being brash or very straight to the point. It actually means you're being straight to the point, but with respect. There is honesty and there is respect. And once you have a mix of these two things really nicely, you can have any kind of conversation. But again, ask yourself that do you avoid these conversations which need to happen, but you're not, you're letting it simmer and therefore you're like, what's the point of this headache? I might as well do it. So really important five principles, pay attention to this because once you're comfortable with all these five, I assure you doing things tactically, applying those things practically, it becomes way easier. But if there is a mental bottleneck, then um, it's going to be tricky. Okay. So again, really important set of points here for you to absorb, for you to reflect on saying, where do I need to become better here? Okay. Just identify those one or two areas and where I need to think in an autopilot way. Is it who not how? Is it about having that value of time, my time, you know, protecting that value of time and, and deploying it the right way? Where do you need to focus? All right. Now, just again, the other bit is saying, okay, great. I, I know the importance of delegation, but how do I know uh, when to delegate? Because we're not really talking about delegating everything here, right? Knowing when to delegate. And by the way, delegation is not allocation, right? It's delegation comes with autonomy and authority and accountability. So you're giving autonomy to the person. They have the authority to get the task done and they have the full accountability. The buck stops with them. Okay. That's what we're talking about when we say delegation. So when to delegate? Now it's a simple, you know, uh, two by two and easy to grasp. If you look at, look at the uh, accesses, you will see the vertical one, which is talking about individual readiness. The, the person who you're thinking of delegating, you have to reflect and say, what's the skill level and what's the will level? Do they want to do it? Are they ready to do it? And the horizontal axis is really talking about the importance of the task or what is the meaningfulness or the value of the task, right? That's, that's what you're looking at. Now, I'm sure as you can see that if the readiness is not there, but the task is very urgent, you don't want to delegate that, okay? And you should be absolutely looking at delegation if the task is not too critical and the person is actually ready and has that skill and will. Absolutely, that's the area that you need to be consciously delegating. And the, the other two quadrants are where, again, as you can imagine, the, either the readiness is not, not there or the task is quite critical there. Even if you feel that, yes, you can delegate, I would highly recommend that you monitor it very, very closely, okay? Because either you want to train the person, want to make sure that they are upskilling themselves, or you want to make sure that the task is going, um, you know, or is happening properly because the criticality is high, right? So this is really, really simple framework, but will help you understand, should I be delegating or should I not be? What should I be focusing on here? And remember one thing, I mean, this is a big one. You should be doing only those tasks which you can do. 
And let's build on this slightly because I want to share with you another tactical framework as to identifying you know, what to delegate and who to delegate to is when you're hiring in your business, you're not hiring for positions, okay? This is a, re pay attention. So you're not hiring for positions. You're actually hiring to release your time, okay? It's a very important concept. As I'm saying, you're the most important resource in the business. And this is not to make you feel good. This is very objectively looking at the business and saying, which is the most important resource? If you're the most important resource, then we need to make sure that you are focusing on high value activities, which only you can do to start off with. And obviously, we are going to prepare the next succession line. But right now, let's focus on that. Therefore, you're hiring or you're delegating the tasks to actually release your own time. It's a big distinction, which I want you to mentally make and really understand the point. OK, so when people say, oh, yeah, let me hire for an admin position or let me hire for a marketing position, you have to actually first understand where is your time going? And what do I need to hire? So, or who do I need to delegate to, uh, to release my time so that I can focus on high value activities? Okay, I hope that makes sense. Um, another thing that I will tell you, and just make a note of this, uh, that look, there is a 70% rule, okay? When you are delegating, no one to start off with will do it to the efficiency level the way you are doing it, okay? Most probably, uh, if you're good at that task, they will not be there. But 70% rule is that if the person you've delegated the task to is at 70% level of performance compared to you, it's a great achievement, okay? So you have to make peace with the balance 30% because that peace that you're making is allowing you to create more value in the business. And this is a really, really important point. So 70% rule is what you want to follow to make sure that you're not focusing on the area with which you should not focus, but really moving forward and creating the right value for the business. All right.